we're we're ready. Um, Professor Liu, would you like to uh, start us off this morning? Okay. I, I first want to thank you again to our colleagues in Germany to host yesterday, a very successful one. Uh, so I have a few slides just open uh, today's session. And then Richard and uh, Brandon will take over from there. Uh, I'm going to talk about why we're doing PyCAF and ASPEC as the two software we're going to talk about today for CAF and modeling. Uh, I know that uh, many of you are, are CAF and, uh, practitioners, but uh, I still want to give a little bit overview of what a CAF is about. Uh, it's calculation phase diagrams, and it has a community which has a conference. It's Golden Star Conference started in 1973. There's a private foundation since 1975. Uh, the goal of the foundation, foundation is to back up uh, the annual conference because, you know, you finance risk issues. And later on, we started scholarships and awards. And there's a journal started in 1977. And as you know, there are many tools and uh, databases. Uh, they are the backbone of ICME and MGI. A uh, commercial ones, SomoCAC, FactSage, CompuSum, Pandat, GML Pro, and Medicard. Uh, I, I, that's that's the ones I know in the community, which are widely used by 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 different uh, users. And also we have the open source ones. Uh, one is Open Cafet, that's started by Bosuma, a uh, Semochimica that's started in Germany or uh, in Canada, and we have which is started by Richard. And then we have this Cafet modeling, that's a special one, SBA, um, uh, based on Cafet uh, of Cafet modeling. A uh, fact, some of has one pirate, right? Fact stage, I don't know they have a, have one. CompuSum has one. And Gematro doesn't have it, Medicard doesn't have it. So this is, I think it's the SBA, it's, it's one of the very unique tool uh, based on pack fact Because we need to do SBA, we need to pack up, need a pack up to do the minimization energy. So one slide about cap modeling is that basically model the Gibbs energy as a function of temperature, pressure composition. But very important that is also modeling of Kasai, that's internal degree freedom. Right, that's very unique for the long equivalence of dynamics. And then you, you want to have it that the, the data, so you got to take the uh, DFT data, which is derivatives of the Gibbs energy, uh, heat capacity, entropy, entropy activity. You can do experiments, of course, but experiments only give you the stable ones. And the uh, uh, DFT gives you all the metal stable ones, even non-stable ones. And then you get the phase equilibrium data, get the, you, mean, you refine the parameters. So, so SPA takes this data, use a pack of the value the parameters. As we all know that you start with the pure elements, you go to binary autonomy and multi-component, and then you do the material design, a equilibrium driving force and the physical chemical properties, which are the first and second derivatives of the Gibbs energy function. And if you look at the pack of the develop, uh, development, uh, if you think about the, uh, uh, this is I wrote 29, 2009, about 20 years ago, uh, most of the CAFAD modeling is using experiment data and estimation. And the 20 years, uh, since the last, last 20 years, we get a lot of DFT calculations. And uh, yesterday you did exercise, use a pi ion, uh, uh, use VASP as the calculation engine. Uh, first principles, most of it zero Kelvin, and then you do the statistic. Again, you had some exercise yesterday too, to, to do the final temperature. Okay, now you see that you get experiments, you get first principles, you get statistics together, you get a very good data for the modeling. In that case, it really enhances the, the predictive power of this CAF and modeling. Uh, with, uh, of course, without first principle, you can still do prediction, but it's less reliable with the first principles. And it's not only faster, but it's actually making the prediction more reliable, more accurate. I want to mention that I, I, I managed to finish the overview paper last month and the overview of these different approaches and these applications. I uh, talk about a computing some dynamics. CAFET is just one component of it, right? The DFT is a very, very important component. And it's all about free energy or Gibbs energy or, or Hermos energy and how we create the data, how we do the modeling, how we apply them. And uh, so this is the diagram from Richard Sissis. Uh, he finished in 2016, well, four years already. I couldn't believe it. I thought he was just like yesterday here. 
That's because we're still interacting too, a lot. That's probably why. Huh? I, I wonder, I, I think uh, Richard really picked up a very, very important point in the chi model. Is that when we collect the data, right? Then when we collect the data, we do the modeling, we'll, we'll, we miss all the metadata is lost. That's a huge amount of knowledge, right? So when we do the modeling, we have this uh, iteration. Okay, as soon as we finish the modeling, we lost the history. And then when the data is compiled to database, we lost the metadata again. So we only get a CDB file. Now you see, I, I think Richard did a great job is that you see you have disparity source here, you have disparity source here. So at the beginning, you have disparity the individual data. At the end, you have disparity the data point, the, the function parameters. So the, all this knowledge in the middle are lost. Okay, that, that's very bad, right? That means if you want to, the problem is that the consequence of that one is that, for example, you have a six com component system, you want to change one component. For example, again, better data from DFT or from experiments, you have to change all of them. It's impossible. In the last 50 years of CAFAD modeling, that has been a problem. Okay, big challenge. So that's, 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 that's why we do, do pack have an aspect. We want to change this paradigm. We want to be able to model the six component system Whenever you, whatever you change in the system, you change one component, two components, three components, that's fine. We can read the tunnel system in a very faster fashion, more reliable. So that's about the pack of the aspect. I think I have one more slide probably. So tools, and uh, I'm not gonna go through all the tools. Uh, I do mention that we have machine learning code now. We have DFTK, that's all DFT code, which we have been, have been developing. And now I, I'm, I'm sure that we can learn a lot from PyIM to improve it. And we, we, we built our DFTK based on the Matrix Project uh, platform with, uh, with uh, PyMaging and so forth. So. And then PyCav is for data processing and SP. And also I wanna mention that uh, in collaboration with the people at Org National Lab, take out these two codes, you can do uncertainty quantification for the model parameters and predictions. We are not being able to do the model uncertainty yet, but with uh, Richard just published a new paper I think we, start to, we can start to do the model uncertainty too. Again, it's open source. So I really hope you guys can pick up it and do development of for your own properties. And also we have a, have a YouTube playlist. A, in a, have uh, the presentations by Richard back starting 2015, I believe, uh, at one of the sci-fi conference. And it was Richard and Brandon also presented uh, the tutorials for them. You will get his file. So, uh, because this is impossible to write it down, right? Okay, so the, the, the bottom line is in the future, we want to do this data ecosystem. In that sense, what it means is that we get the data from the theoretical predictions, machine learning, DFT, and the even mechanical properties, and, and other properties, right? It's all the secondary derivatives. And the experiment measurements, you, you can create this input data called a portal data, and then you can use SPA, pack of the developer databases, then you can do material design, and you get new data like in the processing. You can feed back. That's important, the cycle. Feed back in there. When the materials come to the end of the lifetime, you get new data. We come back and put it there. Then you improve the database. So the idea is that you can do this uh, cycle continuously at the data ecosystem. We hope a PACAF at SBA can help to do that. And I did ask uh, our staff at Penn State to join that. What do, what do we really mean by ecosystem? That's kind of ecosystem we have here. SPA would be elevated the data into the, the, the format and then uh, be used again and regenerate again. All right, that's my open. I, I wish you have a great uh, workshop day. And we thank you again, Richard, uh, to really spearhead this activity. And we thank everybody's support. I'm so happy that we can work with a, a Yorgos group at the Max Planck Institute to, to tie our strings together. Thanks. Richard, back to you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Professor Liu, um, for, that, for that overview presentation and providing some important context for today. So I see we've got um, 78 users on the Zoom. Um, I see we have a similar number of people logged in on the Jupyter Hub currently. Um, if, please please let, uh, let us know in the chat if, um, if you're having any problems logging into the, uh, the Jupyter Hub um, or if, uh, if by any chance, maybe you forgot your password from yesterday, we can reset it for 